four o'clock, and we are going to start our committee of the whole meeting of June the 3rd, 2014. We'd like to welcome Corey McCarthy for Channel 32, and uh, Bob Fox for Temple Star replacing Rennie today. And welcome to Wendy for being in the gallery. We shot a few members today. Megan is on holiday, will be back tonight, and uh, Councillor Balfour is out of town. So I'm sharing the meeting in his place. We will ask uh, Councillor Barn, could you <laughs> do the honor, please? I'm glad to, thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to be here to serve on town council. We're thankful for the opportunity we have to uh, serve this meeting this night. I pray the Spirit will be with us as we um, deliberate in this meeting that the things that we discuss and are said and decided upon will be in accordance with thy will. We're grateful for the opportunity to serve our community. I ask you to guide and direct and be with us in all that we do. That we might keep our town a, a good town and, and increase its ability to be even better. And we ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Today we have under three additions and uh, adoption of agenda, we need to add under six and A, there will be the plebiscite questions. This should have been there, but it's not here. Okay. I need a motion to accept the agenda. Councillor Ben Green, move to Adopt the agenda as uh, amended. All in favor? Thank you. The uh, minutes of the CCW meeting of May the 6th are there, and we need to adopt them. Any questions regarding those minutes? I just wonder is that Tyler's actual name, is Andreessen or Andrew Durson? Andrew's recent injury. Is it Andrew's injury? Okay, I, I didn't yeah. realize it when I heard it. I, yeah. Okay. okay. Any other questions regarding that? Seeing that, Councillor Creed moved to adopt the meetings of May the 6th, 2014, uh, CCW. All in favor? It's adopted. Thank you. All right, we have no delegation at this point, so we can go directly under 6A, business arising, plebiscite questions. And as you uh, could have seen from the research that Tyler did for us, there are different ways to present questions when you want to have a plebiscite on anything. You can skew it, you can put as much bias to it as you want, or you can leave it as transparent as you can and allow for people to do their own uh, maneuvering in a town regarding the issue. And you can mm -hmm. vote. Is, so, it in our, is it in here? No, it, it is. In our last council. It was at your, last in your last council. council. Last All right. So to give you an idea, if you have uh, questions uh, for fluoride, if you want to have it as unbiased as possible, you could simply have something as flu fluoride in capstone water for or against yeah. and let the people decide. And then it behooves the people who feel strongly opposed to having fluoride to make sure that uh, their point of view is uh, dispersed in the population. Same story for backyard hands in town. You can have it as simple as for or against. Or if you want to uh, skew it differently, you can say, do you support backyard chickens as part of a local urban agricultural initiatives? So those are uh, different questions uh, that we have to decide what will be the more uh, unbiased way to have the question. Mayor, I've always found that if you put too much 
into a into a plebiscite or to a question, then people basically don't understand. And I think it's just a for and against as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Councillor Edmonds, what's your position? I think that way too. Okay. Uh, Councillor Creek? Okay. I'm just trying to find the question. Okay. Uh, the, way, the way that, uh, that uh, oh, Tyler wrote them I thought was very good actually if we use something very, uh, very similar to the way that uh, he wrote them. Uh, I think what's more important than the question is, is uh, making sure the public know that it's, a, that it's a, an opinion survey, a non-binding plebiscite, because uh, you know, the fact that it may be very close one way or the other, uh, people should realize that the council will still have the opportunity to make the final decision Correct. on that. And I think that's Correct. probably what is, is more important than the, the question, although, although I, I agree that the question should be kept very simple. Okay. Councillor Bounds? I think simple is the way I, I, I agree with Councillor. Yeah. Councilor Peebles? Same. Simpler the better. I, I really agree with Councilor Creed that mm -hmm. emphasis needs to be put on the fact that they are not setting policy. They're just kind of pulling in on the issue and then we will take that into consideration when we make our decision. Uh, because if we end up voting against a majority, you know, we don't want to look bad. We just want to say, look, we just needed to know what percentage of the town was in favor, was against, and that would help us make our decision. Yeah, yeah and, and let's hope that council represents the opinion at large, which is normally the wisest mm -hmm. choice because people elected us to represent mm -hmm. the wider mm -hmm. uh, population, not a very limited amount, right? Well, and the, and the reason I bring it up is because Calgary, they kept having to vote. Uh, they did, I think, four plebiscites in the last decade uh, about fluoride. And it kept coming back. 43% didn't want it. 57% did. Then it came. 47% wanted it. 53 didn't. And they realized, look, this whole thing is half and half here. But the half that kept winning was the half that wanted fluoride. Finally, they said, we cannot enforce this fluoride on the on the half that don't want it. So they pulled it. The councilors of Calgary voted against the majority, right. and they pulled it because you know a, an overwhelming minority didn't want it. And they said, you know what, on behalf of that minority, we can't keep forcing this down their throats. Yeah, I mean, so if it's, okay. if so, it's 10 or 15 or 20 percent, like, yeah. you know, that's a different story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The difficulty comes when the vote is very close. So this is also something else that we can decide also. Would, if we say 60 percent are against, would that be a threshold that is significant to us? Yeah, is that what we're looking at? Do, do we say if we have a 60% threshold, uh, would that sway council decision well, I think, to, to take it out? Yeah, I think uh, I agree with Bill Creed here, Councillor Creed. You know, when, when we say if we're rolling this out as a non binding plebiscite, then we are clear that each individual councillor can vote their own, you know after their research and they're taking that into account. So we're not locking in the town council on the results of the plebiscite. Right. But we also need to represent the population mm -hmm. at large. Yeah. Granted. It has to be fair. Granted. Right. Mm -hmm. But there, there, there are times in the history of the world when you have to vote against the majority. You have to vote your conscience against the will of the majority. I think, you know, Mr. Manager, and, uh, what Councillor Peebway is saying, especially I think this, this, is, this is probably more, more so with, with the fluoride issue because the fact is that, is that to, you know, for a person that would like to have fluoride, it's a very, very small cost to have it. Have it. Mm -hmm. for, for someone that does not want to have fluoride, the cost is enormous to be able to put in a system to, uh, okay. to uh, All right. take it out. And so I think, I think when you have a very large minority that, that doesn't want it, then I think we have to have to consider well, that. Well, I think minority. that would, uh, I agree, mm -hmm. a large ma ma minority would be something that mm -hmm. to me would constitute a reflection of the desire of the people. It's a majority you're talking about. Okay, so would you want the two questions to be worded as simple as fluoride in cats and water for or against? 
chicken backyard and in Carlton for or against. Is that something that would be a question that would be suitable that totally unskewed? <coughs> yes, however, if I may, the, uh, the chicken one where it talked about the, it, it listed a couple of restrictions to that. And it pointed that out in the vote, just saying, hey, you know, we're not just going to release chickens willy-nilly. We're saying, hey, you know, would you allow those who want chickens and are willing to abide by the guidelines? Okay, so yeah, how but they don't you... know the guidelines, Councillor. Well, hopefully by then we would know what they were and release them out to the public. Okay, for so, Councillor, how would you word it then? Could you try to word it for me? Well, basically, uh, something along the lines of, are you in favor of allowing residents who would like to have chickens, you know, as long as they're agreed to abide by the guidelines that have been the setbacks and regulations. Previously. Yeah, the setbacks and regulations. Okay, so maybe let's go back to the fluoride. The fluoride question: Do you want it as fluoride in calcium water for or against? Let's try to make uh, deal with them separately since we have different format. So, would that question be okay this way? For the fluoride. Yeah. Are you asking yeah. this all, or yes, yes, or, yes, yes. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm asking you all so that we can decide uh, for administration well, as to I think what it with will the, look with like. With the fluoride, I, I think it's important that the, the people have had an opportunity to be educated. We've had people here, yeah, professional but, people, both on either side of the question. Okay. And I think that the, the simpler the question on the fluoride, are you in favor of Removing fluoride from the town of Carson Water, yes or no? Well, I think that's a simple way. When you start to put the word removing, you're already skewing it in one way. If you don't put that word, you're letting okay, it decide. Okay, so are you in favor of having in fluoride in the water in Carson? Yes or no. Yes or no. Okay, so that, that will be the question. Are you in favor of having fluoride in the water, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Is that that's, okay? That's easy. Okay, are we in agreement with that question for the fluoride? Mm -hmm. Yay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so that's a question that's going to be for the fluoride. Now jam? let's go back to the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen. <laughs> to the kitchen. Chickens, yeah. <laughs> let's go back to the chickens. You've been in okay, the all day. so, yeah, pretty well. Could we use the word hands? Just yeah, backyard hands, mm -hmm. that's what uh, I had. Uh, thank you. So, Councillor Pivoy, do you want to try to formulate? the way you would like to see it? So, you know, you know what's funny is, I, I know I have one here, and all of a sudden now it's not here, that worded it so well. Oh, I saw it last week. The one from, from last, from the council that it was written? Yeah, so well, I'm looking at are you I'm favor? looking at that one, this Lake Alley, Wisconsin. That's right here. But, but there was, I here. swear, there was another one that I saw. That's the only one I saw. And it's the only one that he, he, he submitted on this. Yeah. Yes, there was only one question. So, you know, if we go... Are, not more than six. Right. Okay. Are you in favor of allowing, uh, you know, Cardston residents to own, to not, own more than not more six, than whatever six, our chickens six, is? Six, as we were talking. Six, I think. Yeah, I think we talked about it as maximum of six. Yeah, and, and I think that maybe one of, the, one of the hiccups with picking our club site question right now is that, you know, if we end up going forward with our... Uh, our experimental program, uh, our pilot program, I thought, and this, you know, either way it's fine, but I, I thought we were going to be taking data from that and putting it into the plebiscite question. So I remember well, the simplest a question, oh, yeah, no, the I get better it, it will but, be. Right, so I think that if the uh, pilot program, I mean, with the pilot program we were talking about 10, I think, to 10 chickens. No, 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 six. six. It's always six. six. I think it was maximum of six. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the pilot program documents here, and it he, says he 10. He said it wrong. It was said wrong, because okay. I remember yeah. the newspaper had between yeah. 10 and 20, and yeah. that was totally wrong. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, so if it's six, six, six uh, no more than six, that we could say, female chickens. Okay. Or Are hens. you in favor of allowing four to six backyard hens? On um, the... Uh, Residential zoned. Yeah, and we could we could say, are you in favor of Cardston residents uh, owning, 
not more than. Don't, don't put too much work no, 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 because I, I, people I'm reducing are going words. To, I just cut out two of the to. words you wrote there. So do you want me to start again? Sure. Okay. So are you in favor of Cardston residents owning not more than five female six chi six female chickens while complying with all the regulations as proposed. Zoning, yeah, complying yeah. with zoning and or just regulations as far as complying with all town regulations. Well okay, so Graham, yeah, can you sorry. read that while, again? While complying, so we you left off at six female chickens, while complying with all regulations. That's it. I think the setbacks has to be in there too. Well you know what it will be part of the regulations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you in favor of cats and residents owning four to six backyard hand while complying with all regulations? I, well, I, I, I don't think the word those. owning is the right word. I think it's raising or keeping. You're going to be keeping. raising keeping. chickens keeping. in your yard, keeping. right? Keeping. Mm -hmm. Or keeping. Or keeping. Keeping is a good word. Okay. Yeah. Keeping four to six backyard hand while complying with all regulations. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that comes along, we should have all the regulations you know, outlined, outlined yeah. so that they can, mm -hmm. okay. they'll know what they are. Okay, okay so read that, Graham. Are you in favor of council and residents keeping four to six backyard hands while complying with all regulations? Okay, Councillor Edmonds, how do you feel about that wording? I don't know. Okay, so now I don't Mayor, I'm just I'm just suggesting that the, the wording for me is, are you in favor of allowing backyard hands, period, in town Carson? Okay, and which means that then all the rest will be like with a fluoride. People will have to do their homework to let citizens know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the simplest question, Councillor Bounds. That's a good question. I, I, I like simple. So simple would be... Are, are you in favor, favor of, 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 of uh, allowing people to keep backyard hens yes. in their back in the yard? So the simpler... I prefer simple myself. You would prefer the more complex one. Yeah, well, it's okay. Um, okay. As, as, long as, it, yeah, as, long as, as long as it's clear. Okay. So it seems to me that from what I understand, the simpler question seems to be the preference uh, at this table, which means that then you would word it something similar to the fluoride one. Are you in favor of keeping backyard hands in Carlson for all the Within the town of Carson boundaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so, so that allowing, would be are and you allowing you know, allowing yeah. people to keep are you yeah. People can't mistake that question. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. So, in other words, it would be for the same thing as a fluoride, up to people to let the neighbors and people in the neighborhood know, everywhere around them, know the regulation and the idea behind it, the background. Okay. And that will have to be a lot of background given to people, anyways. Prior it to is, the plebiscite. It has to be yeah. part of what we will be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, people must not vote on something they don't understand, and that I'm quite firm on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those we need Do a we need recommendation. To the, the wording there. Yeah, uh, Graham is going to read that to us. So, <clears throat> for the uh, backyard hens item, I have: Are you in favor of allowing backyard hens in the town of Cardston? For organs, yeah. And then okay. for the fluoride item I have, are you in favor of having fluoride in drinking water? Okay. In Cardston. Cardston drinking. In the Cardston drinking water. But yeah. it's assumed yeah, we it's wouldn't okay. be talking about that bridge. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's okay. well, you, you never it's know. Okay. You never know. Be yeah. precise and you Some people shall think it's a provincial election. Okay. Who are we voting for here? <laughs> okay. So we need someone to put a recommendation forward. So Councillor Ben Green is putting a recommendation for the two questions on a plebiscite. And uh, all, any questions? Any more? No. All in favor? Okay, thank you. So that is settled. Now we are going to thank you, by the way. Thank you so much for.
you have support on that one. Uh, let's go to seven, new business, and let's look at the uh, proposed bylaw that we have here. I really would hope that today what we able to uh, be able to accomplish is to look at all the parameters uh, when the creed uh, met with Marion and with Lloyd and that look at different projects and try to distill the essence of them all and bring something to council regarding that pilot project. Now, if you remember, we uh, are here to try to fine tune that uh, the parameter of a pilot project. We need to work on a what and a who. That's essentially what I would hope to accomplish today. So, what we have here, I hope you all have read it, it's quite comprehensive. There is, at the onset of that pilot project, the bylaw, as is presently existing in our town, that talks about certain restrictions that we have regarding the keeping of poultry uh, on land that is considered really agricultural at this time. And we also need to know if council needs to do anything regarding even the approval of a pilot project, and that is Article 1.3 that states no permit may be used which will allow for the keeping of animal, animals in blocks which are designated for no animals in Schedule A as attached, except as approved by Council. And so I understand, Jeff, that there is a certain map somewhere that we could look at It's not great, and I apologize to Channel 32 because you won't be able to, s the viewers, you won't be able to see this. Just let me move this one quickly. This map, we're going to need to, um, regardless of the pilot program, we're going to need to update just because we've had other areas that have become more dense in the urban areas than they used to be when it was first done. What this basically shows at the time this was done, and again, it's time to update some of these, as any of the white dots are where there can be no poultry in this case, because that's the subject at hand, under the current bylaw. The, the green, which the only ones left are really up here, are two of them except by special permit, and then these are the large over five acre parcels that are zoned agricultural. So that's um, on the west side. But, but you've seen, and this is quite yeah. a little bit rudimentary, but like these green ones have been crossed up, they would become white ones because they've been developed now. So when the map was done, they were quite sparse and large lot, but they're not anymore. So that just gives, that's the schedule that is attached in the bylaw, but I didn't have a way to put that in your package okay. <laughs> because of the so, size of it. Jeff, let me understand. The large law were considered over five acres of land. Yeah, that would be pretty much everything, I believe, in the orange. That you can have yeah, more than two head of livestock or, um, or other things like that. So we've got people with cattle and horses on them now and, and a couple of chickens up in your neck of the woods. So the green is half acre dots? Huh, no, the green was just, um, there wasn't a, a necessarily a size, there were just areas where you could have two animals uh, unless you got a special permit for more. But most of those have since been developed a little more densely or they've simply just changed the bylaw over time. Okay. So Brandon now can print us new maps and we'll get this updated. So Jeff, were the green, were they large, zone large lot before or? or there, there were larger lots, yeah. Um, let me just make sure. Is that West Creek? No, no, that's no, a This would be uh, Scalville, for oh, example, in here. Okay. And then the next cul de sac up. There's two there's just two homes in here now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the campground, the reunion center and campground. So it's just basically So the zoning change for, for parks and green space for that one, for example, mm -hmm. so it was no longer allowed. But. Okay. Yes, there so were sparsely populated lots that, of time. That is uh, good to see. So we can see that really at this point, what is allowed for animals is really the exterior 
of the town on the west side and the same thing on the east side pretty well and and even with some of these now this is occupied these are occupied right and they're yeah. for industrial yeah. commercial purpose so yeah even though they're large enough they're probably not going to be used for that intent so and the, the town owns all of this piece here so the bylaw would have to be amended to 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 meet well, the mapping has to be redone to fit the bylaw to begin with. We need to update that anyway. Regardless of what happens with the pilot project, we'll update the mapping. That's kind of nice. You bring out some bylaws when you start talking about this and see where it needs reviewed. Okay. In order to accommodate a pilot project, there will need to be a couple of small amendments to the bylaw. That's for sure. Um, nothing major, but there'll have to be some amendments. How about the zoning? Well, and that depends if you make it conditional on zoning. Right now it's proposed to be in residential, so we would just make that one tweak to the bylaw, but I don't think it's reasonable to change zoning to allow for the pilot project in any, in any uh, property. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, the, in the current pilot wording, it's, it's basically saying residential except for, and then they talk about like multi-residential yeah, right. mm -hmm. lots. Yeah, right. Uh, with medium density goes, residential yeah. and yes. exclude yeah. a bunch of things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. go ahead. Would that go... When you say changing some of the some of the bylaw, would that be under the discretionary uses? No. Uh, I know? Let me set this down real quick. What? There's a couple of things at play here. I'm not well. Administratively, we're not proposing that we're changing the land use bylaw of what's permitted and what's not in any land use because the land use bylaw doesn't govern this type of thing. It governs the building and the the main use. Yeah. Um, what we're proposing is under the animal bylaw, we would allow for it under specific circumstances in that bylaw, but we wouldn't attempt to change the land use bylaw. Okay. okay. So what we need to do is look at all the descriptions that are given there. So we dealt with the bylaw at this point. What we need to know now uh, to look at is if we have question on all the different items that are proposed here. So you have application 1020 pilot project uh, with applications, uh, permission from property owner, permissions of adjacent property owners. There again, we need to kind of look at it and say which are the adjacent property owner we really talking about. Are we talking about property owner directly to the one side to the other to the back, or is that a wider, wider circle? Uh, Madam Jeff? Mayor, if I might, just one point for clarification. This document in front of you that we're reading is not, is not, not the bylaw. proposed bylaw. No, it's just this is a synopsis of the discussion yes. between Mrs. Creed and Marion and Lloyd to say here's some points that we were generally agreed on, here's some points we should get some in input on, so this is a bit of a synopsis of that discussion. Yes, that's I just want to be clear what its intent mm -hmm. is. I was mm -hmm. trying to say that. <laughs> so if we identify any red flags here, this meeting would be the time Absolutely. to bring them up. Yeah, because it would allow administration to tighten up all those items into a proper bylaw, or proper amendment to the bylaw. And if I might too, and then I'm going to probably butt out of this conversation for a while. There are some items on this, for example, that you would see would be quite different than the current, yeah, um, we'll, we'll, say, we'll current bylaw or some current issues. So we need to try and see if there's a meet in the middle there, or yeah. if we're going to take the the extreme yeah. sides of it. Jeff, I appreciate what you're saying, and I have some concern regarding that, regarding the present bylaw and what is proposed there, because there is some pretty wide and large differences there. Yeah, okay, like if, if, I, if I remember correctly, in, in, in the current bylaw, it doesn't it state that there needs to be 125 feet? Correct. And, mm -hmm. and in here it's saying that Ten the change would be feet. 15 feet from property and at least 20 feet from any adjacent building. So that's a big difference. And this, right? and this is where we need to have a little bit of discussion regarding that. Absolutely. Idea. That's my first thing on my mind. Because, okay, what's your Well, I, I, I think about, I, I, I always kind of look to the worst case scenario in anything. 
and then find out how you can make it better. Worst case scenario, 20 feet from my house, somebody that doesn't look after their coop and it gets pretty smelly, it's gonna, that, that odor's gonna come into my house. And I don't want that, okay? So I'm saying it needs to be farther away. Okay. So it's probably gonna be 50, 60 feet at least. Okay, uh, Councillor Van Green, then Councillor Peebor. Mayor, as you look at all these terms and conditions and and uh, the parameters of a, of a of a pilot project, who's going to enforce this thing? I mean, this is this is really an enforceable document, and it's it's got to be very closely followed in the enforcement areas, or or you're just going to have a a pilot project with absolutely no real end results. Okay. And I mean, I look at I look at all this kind of stuff, and holy smokes! Okay, you know? the first the first thing that people will have to do is to have a government of Alberta premises identification program registration, right? So that is registered with a town with the bylaw officer, and then uh, yes, it leaves the bylaw officer to um, be able to do random random uh, visitation and uh, I was curious to know about this too as to how it will be done and is addressed under monthly random inspections it says it would be done uh, randomly I don't know how many and I don't know how often but uh, it would be to be understood that maybe couple property or something like that a month might be visited. I think uh, the intent of, of a pilot project is to see how it will fit within the neighborhoods and really that that's where the enforcement will lie if Dennis has hens and nobody says a word, nobody's bothered by it, that basically tells us what you know what the what the impact is in his neighborhood you know the same with anybody I mean and, and I, I've got no problem with Lloyd you know doing it you know random checking but I think the the essence of the program is is does it impact the neighborhood and so that's that's where you know that's the proof of the pudding if, if, if the people who live next to the door to you know to someone who was keeping the hands has no noticeable impact at all, then, then that really is the proof. Okay, so listening to what you say, you're trying to say that the uh, 15 feet from property line and 20 feet from property line is what you, you deem to be appropriate until uh, people complain. Until proven, proven differently, yeah. I mean, we, we, we could tweak that, you know, and, and it could, you know, it could be up to, but it'll depend a little bit on the on the properties. I don't know. I, I understand you had a had Marion prepared something that on the lots that were people for the pilot projects and and what the yeah. possible uh, distance is like. If you're on a if you're on a you know a seventy foot wide lot, the farthest you can get you know to the neighbor's property line is is uh, you know thirty five feet. Uh, I mean, their house might be over there, but so so say, there there may have to be some uh, discretion figuring out you know how you know how far what 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 is appropriate for for the distance and 20 feet might be appropriate in cases. Uh, in other cases, maybe it'll have to be different. But I think that, you know the proof is going to be when you know okay. when they exist and and if we're doing a pilot project, it is a limited time. So uh, so essentially when you deal with this, the location, you go back to permission from the property, property uh, owner's it's neighbors easy. and you have to strike the balance there. Is that what you're I, saying? I believe that's where, that's where, where it really counts, is with okay. the, with the, with the right. people that are affected. Okay. Mayor, we've, all, right. we've already got almost a pilot project going on in town. And, and the individual that's running chickens has never met any of the conditions. Uh, the neighbor to the north has a fox living under their shed. Uh, dead chickens are found. And uh, that's just one 
that's just one project with chickens. And who's enforcing it? And, and the enforcement isn't going anywhere. I'm, I'm not wondering, I, I feel like we're getting the cart before the horse. If we have a plebiscite and, and we, have, or we have a pilot project in, in place already before we have a public plebiscite, then we're almost defeating a public plebiscite. And I know it's a non-binding one, but we're almost defeating the reason to have a plebiscite. That's my So opinion. what do you suggest, Councillor? I'm suggesting that we have a plebiscite first, and on the, on the, on the wishes and, and the speaking of the town residents, then we proceed with a pilot project on a successful plebiscite. Okay, if you remember when the idea of a pilot project was brought in, no timing was attached to that, and uh, the uh, minutes, uh, verified the minutes, there was no timing attached to when the pilot project will happen, before or after. That is to be decided. But, that, but I'm saying I'd like to see the pilot project run after a successful plebiscite. Okay. My concern is how many people are going to be willing to put up two to three hundred dollars to build this and then be told, no, it's got to go. Okay, so here you bring a, a very good point and we don't want to forget that point. Councillor okay. uh, Yeah, I'm just to, to comment on... We, we're trying to give everybody yeah. a fair yeah. chance sure. here, okay? And Councillor Bangri, if, 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 if we were to, to do the pilot project after the plebiscite, then, then I think that has to be the wording for the plebiscite. Okay. Would you consider a pilot project would be, would be the wording on the plebiscite? You know, okay. if, if we go that route. Okay, and and it's a it's yeah. a fair it's a fair uh, fair mm -hmm. remark, and I think it should be noted that depending on the outcome, outcome mm -hmm. we reword the mm -hmm. uh, question of the plebiscite mm -hmm. if needed to be. Okay, mm -hmm. if that's fair. Just some technical know. things as I've been reading this over. There's there's words that that I don't like. And one of them is roosters and other types of fowl should be prohibited. No, they no, will not be prohibited. Okay. Should is not a good word because that gives people leeway to choose. Okay. Well, no. it says, yeah, it's All a right. recommendation, no. but I don't feel like I want to do that. Be, so I'm going to have a rooster. Will not be permitted. Will not be permitted, period. Okay. Okay? Uh, I can, that's the only fair way. Personally, uh, I have also uh, a little bit of a question there. For those of you who are more into this type of urban agriculture. See, can I, can I just finish off my okay, thoughts here? Because there's a lot of words should in here. And it, it, like all manure and uneaten feed should be regularly removed. Well, see, there's another thing because people Must will be. take that discretion. Yeah. You know, they'll get lazy about it and they may not feel like, you know, that it's really that bad yet. But it, to somebody else, the smell is already offensive. It needs to be, there needs to be a time frame. There, there needs to be some more concrete words. Should is not a good word in this, like the enclosures. No hens should be allowed to roam outside the coop. Okay, so. Shall not be allowed. Okay, mm -hmm. the minute you put a right. will, you put enforcement mm -hmm. to, to do that. So, uh, is it fair to see a peace officer roaming around the area. I think Councillor Creed had a valid point that the neighbors are going to, they're going to let you know. Okay. They're going to do, if there's going to be a lot of self-policing in that. If, okay. If you've got okay. hens running all over and, and they're outside the enclosure and they're jumping up on the neighbor's fence and hens love to jump up on a fence. They'll go to the okay. highest point they can get up, right? The next thing they're into your neighbor's yard roaming around because there's some good food in their neighbor's yard. So. Okay. So, so that's why I think that it has to be a more enforceable word. Okay, so now if it's enforceable and you have your neighbor calling the town and complaining, or calling the peace officer, well, I guess what so happens, then what will happen? What happens then is that person who's in that pilot project has failed. To okay, so it's they've lost one, the privilege, right? one instance and done with. Well, I don't know that one, they need to have a warning, but I'm just saying if it happens, they need to have a warning, and then they, they know. If you have a will, do you have a warning? Well, 
I think you can. That's a play on words, Mayor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Mayor. Councilor Bangren. I look at the at the things that the administration has brought forward. Uh, basically, and very importantly, at the end of this, and this is why I'm saying I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse if we have a pilot project before the the plebiscite, because it states here uh, all participants could initially come up with a five hundred dollar okay, so debt. Let's, let's mm -hmm. discuss that issue. What happens to the hands at the end of the pilot project if it's not successful plebiscite? Mm -hmm. Are there alternative locations identified at the onset to receive the hands if the project does not proceed? These are May very important. That? Point of order? Not really right now because that's for council to discuss. But I'll what, give you what, a chance. What happens to the coops if the project does not proceed? Do the applicants expect to be compensated for their investment? Compliance with the removal order may be somewhat difficult and take substantial time to enforce. So I, I think we need to look at these very seriously uh, uh, problems that, that could evolve uh, if we don't have a successful plebiscite. Okay. So uh, I hear what you're saying. Uh, Wendy, you participated in the drafting of this document. Would you like to uh, address those issues? I'd, I'd appreciate that. Because what uh, Councillor Edmonds said was excellent. That is exactly the question we put to every person that we identified to ask if they were willing, if the pilot program went through, was just what he said. What will happen if it, it fails and they do not give you uh, um, okay to go ahead? Will you be willing? to get rid of your your equipment and to give get rid of your hands. And that was the major stipulation to even to even be uh, asked. So that that is taken care of and there is a place for the hands to go. Okay, can you explain that to me because uh, that I was going to go back to that very uh, issue you address in your um, education package what you call calling, which I mean is putting the animal to rest. But in in there, it says that you could not take care of that well, on your you property. For, for could you that help me a little bit with that? I, I wish somebody could help me because when when I talked, when we all three were there talking about that, I said. There is no way I can go through with the pilot program if you do not allow those chickens to be disposed of the way, properly, the way they should be. If there's nothing for the disposal or the, the natural cycle, we can't do it. Okay, so this so is I probably one item. This is probably one item that we need to really address as council because yeah. here um, in bylaws and ordinances from other communities, it was not from ours, uh, it says that slaughterings of hand, hands is prohibited on a premises. Essentially, uh, those are uh, what other jurisdictions in Canada have proposed in their bylaws. We don't have that at this point in ours, but we know that you propose that the slaughtering would be done on premises uh, from what I understood your presentation to be at council last time. Okay, Councillor Creed, we don't want you oh, to monopolize no. the issue. No, no, I'm just <laughs> saying, I think I believe that was, was put in from Vancouver's uh, and we, I mean, it was discussed at this table, the problems I've had in Vancouver. So we, we don't want to put in a, pro a failure project. And, uh, but I would like to just, just comment on uh, this issue because we have hunters in town, we have fishermen in town. Uh, we don't have any bylaws telling hunters they can't hang up a deer carcass in their garage, take care of it, or, or fishermen that they can't clean their fish in town. Uh, it would be, 
I think it's ludicrous to, to put in a project where you can't say, you can't do anything with them, you can't, you, you, know, you have no disposal, disposal options for hands, so. Uh, I, it always know. goes back to the notion of backyard hands not being classified as pets. Right. It always goes back to the notion that uh, the bylaw has to be uh, its own self-standing bylaw because it doesn't fit no pets, no it's a food security item. Food security but item. I mean, you can call it food security, whatever you want to call it. But you can't classify it pet or rural animal. It seems it needs its own category on its own. Now, uh, Mayor, if I may. We've Go been, ahead, Councillor uh, Pivoy. We've been kind of jumping around from one issue to the coops, to the enclosures, to the slaughter. Yeah, which are all we part may, of the right, uh, thing. The parameters. <coughs> right, so what I'm, some, I'm might not, some might not disturb you, so let's go to the ones that are more right. problematic. Is it our, our mandate today to you know discuss and fix whatever we don't like in this document? Is that yeah. what we're, uh, why we're discussing? Yeah. This document is not a bylaw. Right, right. This document is a synopsis of the uh, meeting that the administration had with Mrs. Uh, Creed and with the bylaw officer. So it's not a written bylaw. It does not have the legalist terms of the bylaw. Yeah, I, okay. perhaps. So those are right. ideas that will bring together a bylaw. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, so might I suggest that we start at the top of those parameters and go through each one just okay, one well, by one. If we don't have a problem with a specific one, we can check that off and move on. And then just that way we're, we're not jumping around. Because I, I just personally have noticed... You're afraid that, that we may going to miss something. No, no, no. I, I just noticed that every time a new councillor speaks on this particular document, um, we're all talking about different things. Okay, and so go ahead. Together, yeah, go ahead. If you want to, to uh, bring it forward, move, if, move uh, it along. Well, if, if I may, just to, just to check off these parameters just one by one so we can get them hammered out. So does anyone have any problems with the application section? Basically, the, I do. Yeah, okay, go ahead. A maximum of 10 to 20. It's pretty ambiguous. Let's just put a maximum on it. A maximum that that wasn't hens. No, it says a maximum of 10 to 20 pilot project applications no. should be considered. All right. No, let's set the number. Uh, do you have a written version of this? Because as we suggest yes, edits, okay. we yeah. can so submit them to the You should the put in there that it's a maximum of 20 projects. So just scratch 10 to, yeah. to 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Simple. Okay. Uh, Permission from property owner. That one makes sense. That means mm -hmm. basically for people who rent but want chickens. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Permission of adjacent property owners. Mm -hmm. We did have a question as to, that you asked at the beginning. Should that only be adjoining yeah. properties or should it be a larger area? Yeah. Um, maybe if we could use the the original, what was it, 150? 125 feet. 125 feet. Uh, that would probably be, if anyone within 125 feet, or whose, whose, whose house would be within 125 feet, if we go back to the original bylaw on that. Of the coop? Of the coop, yeah. So, so really that. you're going to eliminate an awful lot of people So to go on this project. Mayor, in, in well, one block. Well, I'm saying that permission from anybody within. No, no. It, it means wherever you have your coop, 125 feet from there all around would be the privilege of those people to decide. Oh, to decide to whether or not they permission. Uh, they get permission. To get oh, permission. I'm okay with that. Yeah, then in my block, basically, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to have one. Yeah, and, that, yeah, and that's fine. No, that, that means that you would ask the permission yeah, of the people around. Well, he's yeah. saying he wouldn't get permission, so no one on his block is going to get it. Well, well no, <laughs> 125 feet, if, if one yeah, that's, person... that's a big says, circle. Yeah, that is a big circle. In fact, it probably goes across the street in yeah. many cases. Yeah, which yeah, is would. possible. I'd be happy that's to show you exactly that. That's why I kind of really <laughs> cut it out 50 so to 60 Is that a 125 foot circle? That um, just a second. No, if I might, Madam Mayor, we, we took the locations of some of the first group of people nominated for the pilot project. Again, I apologize to anyone watching this on video. You can't see this. What we have is we have 
the addresses in the middle of the properties that were discussed with centrifugal circles around the property. The, the inner circle is 150 feet, the outer circle is 300 feet. Mm. Right. Now, um, centrifugal circles bring up interesting circumstances because if we were to take the location of Councillor Creed at 150 feet, it hits Nobody. one, two, well, it hits the very small corners, but I know one of these isn't occupied. So he'd have three, for example, that would fall within the centrifugal circle. But, for example, if we went to here, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Go neighbors that fall within Go the first centrifugal circle. Go to my property, Jeff. Well, and again, not without having to, I know you're, you're tucked in here, and yeah, you'd hit probably eight yeah, or 10 or 12, yeah, yeah, at 150 feet. So what we looked at was where are these folks located? This would be, I'll use Council Barnes, because we used your property. You've got a deep lot, but 150 feet would still be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven properties. That hypothetically on a centrifugal circle model, you would need to get consent from. Um, the other way you can look at it is side, any adjacent neighbors on the back or the side, and do you consider across the street that that's something you'd have to discuss, but that'd probably make everybody a maximum of probably four, mm -hmm. you know, unless there are some really irregular. All right. My, my yours is a bit irregular, Councillor Creed. You may mm -hmm. have some diff because it kind of jogs around, but mm -hmm. generally that should give you maybe two on the back and one on each side. My feelings, I, I, I've got a big lot, and I'm not saying I want chickens, but if I did, then I have. If it was 125 feet from an adjacent home, yeah, I'm just saying, not home, property, adjacent home. home, then I could easily do that on my own. Jill to the west of me, she's well outside that parameter, and my own house is outside that parameter. My neighbor's house, I, I mean, there isn't a neighbor within my, my uh, yard that it would affect. And I wouldn't have to get permission if it was just adjacent homes. Mm -hmm. But if you take that concentric circle, then you're going to, you know, you're going to have to get a lot of permission. Okay. You know. uh, Councillor Edmonds. I don't think that's necessary. If I looked at, for example, Councillor Peaboy's house, there would be nine. Okay. Because again, you're in like I am, you know, 45, 50 yeah. foot long. But I have an yeah. advantage. I've already got the permission of all nine. So, I'm good. <laughs> Alright. I can't speak to that. It's true. What do we do in the case of a, allowing a different style of building and stuff like that? What is the, uh, what do the letters go out into, the, into that area? Good question. I don't remember the dimension. We, we pull it up on GIS and grab a certain amount on each side. I, I apologize. I just don't remember. No, but... But I would guess it's somewhere around that couple hundred feet range and anyone adjacent. So, so if you had a 300 foot lot, we'd still contact the person adjacent even if they were 300 feet away mm -hmm. because they're adjacent. But right. I, I can't so, have a problem. Of so here is what we need to uh, decide on right now. Do you want to leave it as adjacent property or do you want to put it in a in a circle 125 feet from the group? I think adjacent is more than adequate. The wind never blows? Well, I, that brings up a subject. I was going to say, in reality, those, well, should, be like, dump grounds those the should be like, those should be egg-shaped circles favoring the west. You know? <laughs> same thing. And, uh, Suck you the whole west. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Good point. So, I think if we are adjacent on all sides, mm -hmm. yeah. adjacent on all sides. I think so. Okay. Let's carry on. The zoning. Zoning. Now, this, I'm guessing, is verbiage not from ours, but from no, Vancouver's? This is ours. That, oh, this is our verbiage. Okay. our verbiage. There are different uh, zoning in a town. Some are called residential and are regular lots. Some are large lots, as more what you would see on the west side, or double lots, uh, residential double lots. Some are large uh, agricultural lots. And normally they have a fair amount of acreage. So should only be allowed on lots in the above noted zoning where there is a single family detached dwelling. No 
duplex or higher density and okay. not in mobile home, residential, or median density. Okay? Yeah. So, that's fine. Well, the last bullet is looking for consideration maybe from us. I'm guessing, and maybe Jeff can shed some light on this, I'm guessing there's a minimum lot size required for a single residence. Is that right? Correct. So, in, so our, in R1 zoning, for example, the single family dwelling lot size is 50 size, sorry, is 50 feet wide by 120 feet. Right. So I think if we meet that requirement, we probably knock that whole final bullet right off because I think we have considered the minimum lot size. Now, having said that, if I might just complicate matters for you because it seems to be interesting. Mm -hmm. We have many historical lots, and I'll take mine and Councillor Bangrees because we're both here, that are smaller than 50 by 120 but are R1. But going forward, that's the development standard. So when you get into neighborhoods like ours that are a little bit older and a little more compact, I'm not 50 or 120. Um, so, but I'm still R1 residential. I think I'm 50 by 55 okay. by 100, I think. Something like that. So, so the story really is, um, are we looking at the lot sites like that, or are we looking at uh, something as bigger than a half acre? Well, also, Mary. Half acre is about two, two, two lots. Nine lots a half an acre. We don't, we don't have any mobile home. Um, Set on a large piece of land. No, we don't have any home mobile, mobile home parks mm -hmm. that are designated uh, mobile home parks. Up so south we are. So if you still. Is, is there a, is that there designated? Is they're they're yes. quite small lots yeah. and they're zoned for mobile. They are. Because, because uh, are they very small that they can't accommodate? They're big lots, some of them. See, so you're eliminating, yeah, you're eliminating large mobile lots. home loaner. Yeah. They're interesting lots, if, if I might, Madam Mayor. They're, they're kind of, a lot of them are keystone. Mm -hmm. They start narrow, they go well, out wide in the back, and then the other one is opposite. Historically, it was a centennial project for 1967 because right. they're all shaped like the province of Alberta. Oh, is that what it was? Yes, that's yeah. why. <laughs> there that's go. why they were. Yeah. And so they went back to back. So one has a wide front yard, one has a narrow. Uh, and they... Know. Yeah, well, they, they move them. They move them all over. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that was. So yeah. are you... Uh, but we don't have opinion, any... It should we be don't have an absolutely designated mobile home park mm -hmm. where it's fenced and everything like that controlled park uh, and so we in that in that zoning then we are eliminating a possibility that somebody want ends well um excuse me, madam chairman on here uh they they recommended a, uh, perhaps a ratio of hens she's got her acre but but uh you know, on, on a smaller lot, maybe they could have two or something like that. I mean, that might be a, a way to, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, you know, modify that. You know, okay. Good All right. So. <laughs> well, it's not going to be that. So. That, that figure was, was just thrown out there too, Dennis. That's not. Okay. A, All right. So. It's not let's a, let's let's study it up. <laughs> let's study it up. I what would, oh, what right. would. No, uh, Go ahead, Councillor Well, I, I was just going to say, based on what we have here, I think the zoning chunk, the zoning paragraph there, looks good with the exception of I would recommend just removing that final bullet because I think we resolved most of those questions here. And I think if it comes up that uh, during the time of this program that somebody who is excluded because of verbiage here, then maybe we, we rediscuss it later. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to remove the shouldn'ts too. Yeah. Well, they, they, this, yeah. this is this is like. So that just, said, this that's is just a synopsis recommendation. That's all what it is. It's not a draft. This isn't the. Okay, so design of the group. When it gets to the bylaw stage, you'll have to change that. Yeah. We shall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on because really today we shouldn't have to pass hours on this. Uh, design of the group. You have some different models there, and. Uh, the different placing of the group, etc. Any questions, except for the location of it, 15 feet from the property line or 20 feet from the any yeah, adjacent dwelling. <laughs> so, is that something that, <laughs> Councillor Edmonds, you want to discuss? If I was going to build a coop and I could, had to use new material, I would be kind of upset if I had a bunch of 
lumber that I could use. You would have the proper joystick. Okay, too, the, the, the reason. Spans. Does it the, say the new reason? Or yeah, the reason it was uh, written that way, if I understand, is to make sure that this structure is sound. Doesn't. Well, I can build a sound structure out of old lumber. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not there to verify this. Sound. All I have to do is put it aside. You know, it looks yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that was a. I, I I don't know that you should specify new material. We just I think finished in a in a in a. You know, pleasing that, like you would with a garden shed. I mean, mm -hmm. people build garden sheds out of, out of whatever, but you know, paint, paint so, it. If I may, so what we're proposing, I think, Mary, is just stra scratching the word constructed of new materials. So now it'll read, the coop should be finished in such a manner to fit the inmate. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. So. Should be or will be. Yeah. I will take on the shed final year. One thing I will mention about the 15 to 20 feet, you know, the my uh, my neighbors on either side of me. I'm just speaking from experience. They have dog runs, literally, and that that use my fence as their dog run. So I mean, there's there's zero feet between me and those and those dogs are like inches away from killing my children on a regular basis. But there's no bylaw against it, other than when they make noise and we don't report it. But um, that's yeah, never. That's yeah. So I mean, like basically, this fifteen to twenty feet. Just told me that I agree with your chickens. Consider so oh no, they okay. will because they have killer dogs. So <laughs> you know, they don't want to open that can, right? Okay. Uh, but they. Uh, so I'm just saying this restriction we're putting on chickens is actually greater than the restriction we put on very large, teethy dogs. Add so. in there no chicken shell killer. All right. Yeah. Uh, point well taken. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I agree. Make a comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that my, my, my daughter in West Bountiful, uh, they, have, they have some uh, uh, bylaws concerning sheds that they have to be, I think, five feet from the property lines. And uh, there, were, there was some issues with, with, she has just one neighbor in the backyard that kind of gives everybody issues. But uh, uh, anyway, when, when, the, when the town talked to my daughter, they, they, they asked her about, because she has some neighbors on, actually on three sides of her with sheds closer to her property line than, than five feet. And my daughter said, you know, if you got five feet behind a shed, it's just going to fill up with junk. She says, I'd just as soon have their shed right on my property line. Mm -hmm. But So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here... Um, Where would I put my tires? I'm, <laughs> I, well, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, okay, guys, I'm thinking here on, that, that it might should be... Uh, some, some, somewhat in, in, in conjunction with the, with the neighborhood neighbor's permission as to what what the neighbors feel like, if, you know, like. Well, that's what I said earlier on. You need to somehow have the approval of your neighbors as to where that's going mm -hmm. to be located on your property. Those are guidelines. Mm -hmm. They're guidelines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maximum number of hands, six per pro 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 uh, property, we agreed on that. Mm -hmm. The enclosures, a hand should be kept in a coop, so there is no problem there. The clean and order, order free is what worries most people, is that necessity of having a, an owner that is responsible and treat his chicken as well as any other animal, make sure it's clean and well kept. And winterizing will be a necessity in this part of the woods. So how are these people going to dispose of all this stuff? <laughs> that gonna... is a good question and maybe Wendy can add uh, some information there. Some of them will be using a prior shed, just a part of it. So it's not going to be any change, they'll just put it back to their shed. Some of them will put it on Kijiji if they get a, a regular shed. That They go really fast on Kijiji because okay. a yeah. lot of people... So let's oh, talk about the disposal of waste. Okay, yeah. The disposal okay. of your waste. So I, I just was reading... Um, oh, is that what you said? Yeah, the, the waste uh, okay. That's on, on, on a website. A, a dog produces about three quarters of a pound a day of, of waste. A hen produces about a quarter of a pound. So if you have two dogs, you've got a pound and a half. If you've got six hens, you've got a pound and a half. 
So how do they dispose of the, the, the dog poo? Let me add this to you. We have responsible dog owners that don't clean up after their dogs too. Okay. Is that going to happen with the chickens? We All right. So <laughs> that, that is a question of why we will have a visitation from the bar officer. And if I may, I understood as I was reading through and in previous uh, references, there's supposed to be a uh, you know, a whole composting element to this, or you know, in, in the pilot program at least, that was proposed that the the waste gets put down and, and recycled with the compost of the yard. I mean, we're all encouraged throughout Cardston to have a compost pile. Ever since we stopped picking up yard waste, every yard should have a compost pile. But I understand you can't use uh, chicken manure for two a minimum two years. No. Yeah, not true. <laughs> no. Not true. Okay. The other problem so is that, that will be feed. Let's, let's okay. Get, we want, I, I want to go with this. What Councilor Banks said, two years. Where did you hear that from? I, I read it somewhere. They Some did. people prefer it. I, I've heard that. I've heard it, it. It's so hot that you can't use it for two years. It, for a minute, very, two years. It's very hot, so you have to use it um, in the you use it with lots of water in the composting bin. You have it there for a year. One year is plenty. Or you put it on top of a lots of mulch. Or it'll burn everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a matter of uh, becoming aware of how to dispose of it. That will be part of your education package. Yeah. Feed storage. Random uh, inspection. We spoke about all that. Education. We have this taken care of. Wendy has a program. Uh, now we need to consider the questions that are there and maybe um, the selling of the the hands house, you said you can put them on KGG, whatever, the uh, town will not be responsible for reimbursement of any of the fees. Okay. I think the earlier, application, we will need to have a system of application. Right, I think we missed a bullet. Earlier we discussed removing the line that says slaughtering of hens is prohibited. So yeah, we might just I think uh, that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that didn't make sense. Okay. Every, yeah. I think everything but it's is other large bullets in the middle there, on this page right here, in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I think that has to be done by uh, yeah, right in the dead center. It's about the fifth bullet, bullet down, or third bullet down, third number three. Yeah, by a register. Okay. Man so that that rendering. does not uh, apply. We just scratch that. Just scratch it up because these aren't pets. Right. Okay. So you would have to have a bylaw that's significantly <clears throat> different me, from an animal. Different. You're telling me that if you got kids, that those won't be pets. No, no. They're not going to be pets. No. You want a pet? Well, <laughs> when I was a kid, we used to go to our uncles regularly and chase the turkeys, and we slaughter the turkeys. <laughs> And I was about seven or eight years old. I did not consider that as a pet. It was going to be Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, but you didn't live there day after day. That's okay. They still they'll have names. Been around lots okay. of chickens. I've never considered one they'll chicken have a pet. Names and some kids will even dress them. No. <laughs> I have My grandkids won't be around. Okay. Time, but I'm not going to. Do that. We're spending a whole lot of time. You know, on there will have to be an education uh, part for those who want the pets, uh, who wants a back backyard hen. They will need to educate their children. I don't know there won't be pets because when we raised rabbits, my pet became dinner. That's right. <laughs> and I have pictures to prove <laughs> it. Okay? Now, there is a question that I really want to, to deal with. Uh, I understand that a certain number of people have been, uh, I came forward to participate in that project. Marianne asked me to go to people who I thought would be interested and find at least 10 who would be willing to do it and would be willing to quit at the end. Okay. So I, I think I got about 13. Okay. So uh, Jeff, you have them mapped out somewhere, those potential yeah. Pilot, we have the first that, 10. I think you've added a couple since we did the map, so I don't have them on there, but okay. I think we have the first 10. So, um, is that the properties in green? Is that what I'm seeing? Sorry, I know it's not a huge The circles. It's the circles. So it's 
Here, 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 and here. Three, six, nine, ten. Okay, so. And I understand that we also wanted some uh, counselor to be involved at what you had requested. Now here's a problem I have. We don't have a conflict of interest as per the MGA because it's not a mon monetary item. What we have is an appearance of bias by a group that will be part of a project, but also voting on a project. And that, to me, constitutes a bias that is a problem to me. So, I don't know if it constitutes a bias to any uh, of you. The bias is the We're same talking. way as when you have uh, the idea of personal monetary personal interest. You are asked not to participate in the discussions or on uh, if you have some of your close relative involved with it, you are asked not to participate in it. I followed a, a Josh Cuff seminar that was given in Cochrane, and you were there, and Councillor, you were there, and that was addressed. And what was addressed is that. It's not because it's not in the MGA that people at large will not look at you as participant and lawmaker. It seems like it's a self-serving interest and there where the bias comes in. And I'm, I'm really uh, concerned about that and want to find a solution to that so, there are a few different ways to handle that. Is when we have the discussion on a table, is for councillors involved not to participate in a vote or in a discussion, or not to participate in a project and be part of the discussion. That, to me, would be the fairest way to do it. But I want your opinion. I really do. It, my personal opinion. Councillor Cree? Uh, Madam Chairman, if we could open this for just, just put this with the formality for just a minute just, and just ask some questions to Council uh, and just have a little open discussion on this if that would be all right. Well, it depends on what you're trying very quick. to do. Okay. Um, how many at this table have kept chickens as, as adults? How, mon how many? You, as an adult, you have kept chickens? Okay. You have? Okay. Um, what I'm wondering is, is that how many people have made comments about the government making laws and regulations about something that they know nothing about? We, are, we, are we doing the same thing? We, we talk about the federal government and the provincial government, and they, they make laws, and we, we sometimes will see those laws and we'll say, they don't know what they're talking about. They they don't live in our area. Are we, if we if we make laws concerning the regulation of hens, and we know nothing about it ourselves, how do we how do we have any position to to actually make laws unless we turn it totally to experts and have them draw the you know draw the the, the, the bylaws and then bring it back to council? To you know you, you make a good point. I have nothing wrong with the point you're making, but what I'm trying to make for a point is to make you all aware that the public that is watching will say this council is self-serving. Mayor, if I may. And that's my fear. I have, uh, this is my seventh child is on the way. All my kids are good swimmers. For us to vote on the reduction of a family pass at the pool, could be looked at under your definition as a conflict of interest for me and my family. Uh, it would seem that I would want to lower the rate for a family pass just to serve my family's financial needs. Um, I don't think that that's a fair estimate of that criteria. Uh, my kids love using the parks, so any vote on recreation in this town, I'm already biased against because I, I want my kids to enjoy them. 
uh, by your definition. Again, I don't think that's a fair assessment. In fact, because my kids use the parks, I might be exactly the guy who would be giving input on, on the parks. So there's two ways to look at it. One, P-Boy's self-serving. He wants to do this for his own kids. The other way, P-Boy has good valid input because his kids are the ones going to be using this. So I think that, you know, that no matter what we do, there will be people in each of those camps in the town. There will always be people that see me as the villain who just wants my kids to have nice parks uh, every time we approve a better lawnmower or every time we, you know, we vote to put a pool slide in or whatever. My I don't kids think you have your wrong point. Slide. I'm just saying I, I do not like the perception of bias, but you're right. Are we not biased at a certain time? Well, Maybe I think we, we all as counselors take, have as taxpayers the same exact, you know, personal involvement in everything we vote on. Everything benefits us. Everything that we vote on benefits us as, as town citizens. So to just pinpoint this one issue. Wouldn't as, just as that Biden, issue would right. be any kind of issue that's come a little too close to home. Well, the swimming pool comes close to my home. We, we swim in it every day, all summer long. Yes. We got to remember that we serve the public. And what we do here at this table is for the public at whole not for seven counselors or six counselors, but it's for the general public out there. And, and as long as it serves the community as a whole, then it's up to us to ensure that. Whether we know what the parameters are of the federal government or the provincial government, are they serving the province as a whole? Are they serving Canada as a whole? And that's the same thing as what we're doing at this table. Are we serving the town of Cardston citizens as a whole? Whether we participate or not. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Whether we participate. I don't think we have a conflict of interest in no. this situation. Okay. If you don't think so, ask municipal affairs. Well, you can make a mountain out of a molehill, but I think, I think this is a situation where we, we have to make a decision. If, if, if we're worried about making a decision on this because there might be a perception, then I think everybody from the table better walk away from this table and not have a vote at all because there's always going to be that perception. It's fine. That's my feeling. Okay. So we shall leave it at that. Yep. But at least... It was a good point. We, we talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you will then tell me that you will be at the table, you will be discussing it, you will be voting on it. That's what you choose. Right. Well, I don't think, yeah, sorry. All right. So, Jeff had a question over here, I saw his hand waving. Jeff? I think I don't anymore. <clears throat> I might have for a minute. Uh -huh. I just thought maybe, Madam Mayor, just to make it clear, on the list we have of the 10, just for the benefit <coughs> of the counselors, the list of the ten, we had three counselors on the list of participants and two counselors' children. So the question that came up, I pose it to the mayor is, is there any point in having a pilot project if the public sees a built-in bias right from day one? Is there any point in it? Does the public put any stock in it whatsoever? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I think your points are all valid. I'm not here to argue that at all. It's not my place. I just brought the mayor's attention that when you have these kind of things, do, does the public see it as an exercise in futility if half of the participants are directly linked? And there's no assumption on my part there's a pecuniary interest here. Not at all. And that's the only kind of conflict of interest the council needs to um, excuse himself from. A pecuniary interest means that we're going to make money. That's right. And I'm no, not suggesting that. I don't case. think anybody's going to make not money. suggesting that at all. That, that's that not is the not point. the case. That yeah. is it's not simply not the political not. optics of it. Mm -hmm that I just thought the mayor may want to have some discussion about. That's all. There's no, unless you were to say that you're going to compensate all participants at the end for this and that, now you have a pecuniary problem. Yeah. But you don't know. No suggestion of yeah. it at all. Yeah. But you do have a, a political optics piece for the other 3,573 people out there watching the pilot project. That's my only thought on it. Yeah. I think I may, uh, thank you. The, the people ultimately who will be deciding the fate of this project are the neighbors. The nine people who live around me, each one has a veto vote. Each one can kill it by just sending in a complaint or two. And uh, none of them are related to me. So ultimately we're saying, look, 
people, you're going to put the money up front to do this thing, and all your neighbors who don't have a red cent in it are going to have the power to shut you down. And I'm saying I do that willingly as participating in this pilot program. I believe I'll get unanimous consent, and at the end, rave reviews, letters back. That's, I mean, that's the goal of the pilot yeah. program. Okay, so... None of them are related to me, by the way. Okay. None of my neighbors. So what we now need to do is to uh, ask for administration to kind of bring all this forward as a bylaw for backyard. What I would suggest a recommendation is for administration. We'll, we'll bring back almost an application and and An application kind of form. guidebook yes. for the project, and we will amend the, the bylaw, bylaw the where way it is written. Six new four. Um, for, and it'd be a draft at this point. I would you know, so, see how that looks. So, Mayor, if I can ask, are we going with Councillor's Creed question on the plebiscite, or are we going to go ahead with a pilot project before the plebiscite? We, we will, first of all, need to get that bylaw drafted. We cannot make a decision without having at least a bylaw draft in our hands. At that point, we will have to decide the bylaw will, uh, will regulate that project. We will have then to decide by way of motion which way it will go. And we will have to amend or, or question for a plebiscite if needed. We've spent well, just about an hour on this yeah, topic. Yeah, we need to move on. And we have virtually gone nowhere as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I agree that, that all of this work needs to be done after we find out whether the citizens <coughs> of Cardston would allow backyard hands. Concentrate. And then we concentrate on developing the proposals, the, the drafts, the bylaws and everything. But we can go ahead and do all of this work for futility. Councillor, you can, you can never move the project forward tonight unless you have something that is defined. Well, is it, it has not to defined, be defined to have a plebiscite? That, that Once is, you have a plebiscite, you have a, de a definition of a, a, a defined, already, absolutely... Uh, we already you know, voted that we will have a plebiscite. Okay, then let's have the plebiscite and then worry about putting everything together for the pilot project. Um, whether we have the plebiscite or whether we have the pilot project first, uh, we still need to have the everything in, in, in place for the pilot project. In fact, if we have the plebiscite this fall, it's almost too short of a time to have the pilot project to be of any effect before the plebiscite. But if we have a plebiscite and we have nothing to tell people, uh, then, then they don't know what they're voting on in the plebiscite. So, so I think we need to proceed with with all of the criteria for the pilot project, so that uh, people can have the information available, so that they can look into it and be educated. Yeah, I, I think uh, when we discussed this last time with uh, Marion here, you know, she pointed out that it isn't really prudent to have that plebiscite any time before September. And, uh, and then I, I vaguely recall, and we can check in the minutes if this is recorded, but I, the video shows it. I, I brought it up that I, I thought we could have six months of data, perhaps, before the actual plebiscite even, on the pilot program. So Marion said, uh, again, just paraphrasing, well, then let's bump that plebiscite into October. And then that's, we kind of, my understanding was we voted on that with the hopes that they, we would have some data from the pilot program okay. before the plebiscite. What has not been decided is when that pilot project will happen. And that's what Councillor Bainbury is referring to. Right. As his concern <coughs> is that administration is given a lot of work when a pilot project might not be agreed upon. And therefore, why do we do that? Well, we do that because if you don't have anything to do at worst, it's very difficult to make a decision because you don't have something to vote on. Okay? So let's leave that. we just going to carry on the way we're doing it. Let's move forward and really carry on with the item on 7B. 
Chen, uh, Chinook Arch uh, letter of support request. I had some feedback from uh, four of you regarding uh, the fact that we should uh, write a letter of support from the town to try to get the the uh, Alberta government to realize that libraries are only more and more costly and uh, need to have more funding and surely not less. So I uh, ask if administration would be willing to kind of write that letter for us and uh, tell us that there will. So we need a recommendation from this table to write a letter. I'll, right. I'll make that recommendation that we write a letter of support to the Chinook Arts Regional Library Association system that we're in support of uh, increase, funding. increase in funding to the libraries. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. The Alberta Health Service survey questions, as you could see, we're going to have at the Mayors and Reeve uh, a presentation and they are interested to know what we think could be items of interest to our community. It's uh, the, the way they are doing it is through a monkey survey on the internet. So I have access to that survey, but I thought it would be of interest to you to give me your input so that I can put all that together. One thought that I have on this, Mayor, is, uh, and I've heard several people comment on it, is our, we have a special program, pilot program or something we do here with diet, what is that yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Uh, lifestyle. lifestyle. I, you know, if, if we maybe wrote in a little something that we'd like them to look a little deeper into that, it's possible that... As a preventative know, measure. Right. And then it's possible that, you know, we might get a little more attention on that program, okay. you know, province-wide. So, yeah been piloted in other municipality too. Okay, anything else that you feel uh, regarding healthcare topics to me? It's always infrastructures and how do they intend to move projects that have been on the radar for many, many years and don't seem to ever make it really on the bullseye. Unless you're in Lethbridge. Yeah, Councillor Edmonds. Most of the things that have been working on for the last ten years are still the same spot. That's right. Yeah. So my concern is really so moving that infrastructure forward. Obviously, the way they're doing it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, we deal with dispatch with the EMS, and okay, it, it's ridiculous. Okay. So. Uh, well, there's. That, can I just the, make a comment? Go ahead. Here? I'd like to go on record. There is a perception that if you're the city of Lethbridge and you're the Lethbridge Regional Hospital, you're going to get whatever you want. That's right. Because they're getting one addition after another. They're getting one project after another. They get facilities for this, facilities for that. It's regional. And we get nothing. The little, the smaller communities are forced to do whatever Lethbridge gets. And, and, and I have no problem with Lethbridge getting what they get. I understand the need there, too. But we also have our needs in our communities, and it's just far too much, much of, a per, of a perception that if you're Lethbridge, Calgary, Edmonton, or maybe Medicine Hat, your projects will get an ear, and you'll okay. get them approved. So but We need to get our words in there and get our projects. Okay, rural so communities, are, rural communities yeah. are in need. So I, I wrote that down. Um, I think so. Two, will lifestyle, I will address that. Three. They want to know how to increase engagement with our respective municipalities. So I think the fact that they're willing to come and meet with uh, mayors and reeves is already a very good thing. They have done presentations in our town and it uh, would be good for them to do it at local council meeting every so often. I wouldn't I would think that could be a good thing if we want to ask direct questions when we have really something burning. One thing that would be handy to know is if they have a timeline <coughs> of all these things that they promised us and where they are on that timeline. We seem to go to the same meetings over and over again and they tell us all the same things but they never tell us where we are on the timeline. Okay. so. 
Uh, I will make a note of that. How can AHS work with our caucus? Well, that's with the mayors and Reeve, so we'll, we'll address that. Okay, thank you very much. So I will do the, the survey and I will include your, your input. Thank you. Okay, now let's move on to strat, uh, strategic plan under eight. That is a report that is there for your, for your information. Do you see a little bit how things are moving along? Yeah, I just wanted Councilor to Pivoy. compliment administration on that format. Yes. Uh, that's a really good report, and we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I thought it was very easy to read, and we could see what move forward. It's a way for administration to help us keep an eye and mm -hmm. uh, be accountable. So, yeah, if you could pass on to Marion that she did something right, and then... <laughs> just, don't exactly maybe not those words. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll just a touch, Council. All right. Now, Mayor, I've got one question here. It says plant fruit-bearing trees and brushes, uh, bushes in on public the, areas and forest areas. Can the public access some of those bushes for their boulevards and stuff? Um, the intent in this, and Councilor Creed was a bit exactly of a catalyst behind is. this, if I might, Madam Mayor. The intent was in our parks and green spaces to potentially start putting some fruit bearing trees down in those publicly accessible areas, yes. Okay. Yeah. We, um, we've been cautious about the trees that can go on boulevards simply for what they can leave behind in the fall. Mm -hmm. So those are relatively prescribed, what goes on the boulevard. We have three or four options. But no, we were looking more at our green spaces, parks, anywhere that can be accessed but have, you know, start some fruit bearing, I mean, as much as you can have an orchard in this part of the world, but choke cherry trees and uh, crabs and different things like that. Sure. Oh, I think, I think Schubert choke cherries are approved as the, uh, in the boulevard tree planting program. They, they might be. If, if I recall. So there, there is, I think, some, uh, program with, 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 with the boulevard trees that you can apply for, so they, yeah. I'm thinking people with the large acre lots up west and, and, and east, yeah. if they could access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Any other question regarding that strategic no. plan? No? Okay. Correspondence. If we look at it, uh, the Alberta Municipal Affairs, that is to let us know that a uh, regional economic development grant was approved. In fact, if you notice, it's changed name. It's called now Alberta Community Partnership. Yeah. Is that one that we share with these other communities? Yes. yes. This was written by the town of uh, Raymond. <laughs> so $42,000 <laughs> between yes. how many communities? There is uh, all the people below, so three, six, seven. Okay? I just, if, if I might, Council Brian, maybe I'm reading into your question. It's meant for a specific initiative that we're all on, working on together. Okay. So it was a tourism initiative. Okay. A few years ago, we had a gap analysis done by the Badlands of mm -hmm. tourism readiness in the area. And this is some money to follow up on that and start to look at how we can close some of those okay. gaps. That, so that, it's a collaborative affair here. Yeah, yeah, that's gotcha. what it is. Okay. It's tourism Thank you. application. And I had, I had that in my uh, report on the Mormon Trail committee meeting. Yeah. Uh, there is a letter for an MP, Dennis Lebon, telling us about the new Building Canada Plant Initiative with the largest Fed infrastructure money input, 32.2 billion. Is this new money? Uh, that is new money. Jeff, I just wondered, how can the town access some of that money? So we, if I might, we've been hearing that this is coming down for a while. <coughs> um, and so we've started looking at what some appropriate projects might be. Um, we have a couple of things that we think might be great projects for it, such as creek bait stabilization. Oh, yeah. Uh, might be a good project for us to start using some of this. We think it fits very well. And so we may be coming back to council with uh, a bit of a tweak to the budget if we can be successful in getting some of this for a couple of those projects. Um, we've kicked around using it for the pool building because there is a recreation component to the grant. Um, so we've just been waiting to hear when it's going to be accessible. They announced it a long time ago without a vehicle to apply. 
And so now that that's out, we have, I believe, until November. Um, actually, I don't know that, that date for sure, but we have some time still to get our applications going, and we have a couple of projects in mind we think will fit quite nicely. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mayor, Yes. If, if you remember in our replies back to you, Councillor Creed asked for this uh, clarification from Jeff Wilson. Yeah, and, that and we, that. We, we got a clarification except that what is not clear to me yet from the uh, MLA Jeff Wilson's uh, reply is that where is the position of Alberta in comparison of, well, regarding that issue, the new funding, and how does it affect our community uh, regardless of the position of Alberta? And I think that's this what is what I'm not sure. Them. Well, this is not clear yet because it tells you that the, the municipalities are able to access the money directly. And so, regardless if uh, Alberta signed or didn't sign, makes no difference. If we can, if we can access it directly, right. that's all what I care about. Is there a way it. for me yeah. to get the money? And that's yeah. maybe maybe administration yeah. has some answers to that. Uh, that that letter that was put in there by Jeff Wilson saying that you know that the province hadn't signed on to that. Does that does that block us, or do you know? Um, this is what I don't know. I would need to look at our capital uh, um, funding sheet, and I'm sorry I don't have it in front of me. We wouldn't have anything planned for this summer under the um, New Building Canada Fund, mm -hmm. so we would we would look at new projects like creep remediation or something like that. Um, and yes, we we anticipate delays in the federal tax gas tax fund because we've dealt with that one for quite some time. Um, I think we'll still be fine. I, I don't know that we have any projects hinging on the release of this money. Um, not that it's come up anyway. Uh, you know, that's what I was wondering is, is the fact if, if the province hasn't signed on to that, does that does that delay us or block us from being able to access the money? That's the kind of question. You know, I'd have to ask Noella. I'm sorry, I just can't answer. That's something I'd have to get back to, and I certainly can follow up in a week at council meeting. See, that's what. Councillor Creed wanted to bring up at AUMA. Yeah. With the yeah. meeting with AUMA. Yeah. yeah. And uh, with the mayors and mayors. Yes. Yeah. Which I will. Okay, and the last piece of uh, information here is a letter uh, from uh, Mrs. Uh, Sharon Terry, who is really frustrated with the weed Spring. issues and the need for neighbors to be better neighbors at looking after their properties, which is a good point. Question. Um, go ahead. Uh, we have some town-owned lot in that area, Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, are our lots taken care of? Um, are they mowed as quickly as everyone would like? Well, no, no, no. they've been sprayed and things like that in that in that particular area where Mrs. Terry is living. This one is currently mowed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me. May I answer that, Madam Chair? Sure. Because uh, Sharon Terry actually initially called me, and uh, was you know was concerned you know that, that her neighbor hadn't mowed the lot, and uh, so I contacted Lloyd Stewart on that. And uh, he contacted the, the property owner, who did the next day uh, mow the grass. And then he asked Lloyd, he says, well, I mowed mine, but how come the town lot isn't yeah. mowed? And uh, Lloyd says, well, we, we, good point. we have hired somebody to, to mow that, and, and it did get mowed. But I think she still has a, a concern that we mow it once during the summer. <laughs> and, you know. Is that enough? Is that enough? You know, do we do no, have everybody have else lots their lawns ongoing week, uh, yeah. care on these on these lots? And and I, I am concerned about the town lots as well. That you know, people are we're asking other people to do theirs. We need to be we cognizant of our own of our own properties, our own town. Well, properties. I think we have to lead out. If we're asking people to be responsible, mm -hmm. we as a town need to be responsible. So I, I mean, I have another person on asking about the, the properties down in Scowville as well. And I was told they would be mowed yesterday and I haven't checked to see if they were mowed. But, uh, okay. Mayor, I think our Parks and Recreation Department do, does a fabulous job. 
Um, and uh, it's pretty hard to get around to, to some of these small properties, especially along that south hill. There's one right across from the, from the uh, Remington uh, entrance um, that gets a little bit out of hand. But as long as they're, they're conscious of the situation, maybe if we could, if we could ask administration to approach our parks and recreation and, and ask them to be a little bit more vigil on, on mowing maybe more okay. than once a once a once a month or like that property where they removed the houses up there and the southeast hill over there behind Dr. Yes. Hollingsworth place, mm -hmm. the whole side hill there can be up like that before you know it. Okay. Well, there, 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 on there. there are different kind of issues if you don't mind me speaking first. The issue has to do uh, with that hill on the east side. Mm -hmm. That hill is normally going to be cut and built. If you spray it, it's not really helping the matters. So we have alfalfa that's growing there. My concern is more that the weeds are choking the alfalfa and the alfalfa is not growing. So what I really think might need to be looked at is a receding program of some sort, mm -hmm. possibly. I don't know how administration uh, handles receding of the hills, but possibly that is something that should be looked at to get new growth and a little bit more vigor to those there, a few years back, that hill, there was a proposal to have have a walking path around there and some bushes and some benches set up and to, to beautify that hill. To me, growing alpha alpha and baling, uh, cutting it and baling it once a year doesn't cut it okay. because, because that is a beautiful hill yeah. site. The reason for the alfalfa is because it has very That's deep right. roots and because that hill has a tendency of slippage, the deep root hold the ground. That's what I was told. Am I correct? Yes, you're correct. The, the, the comment you. I was wanted to answer to Councilman Pengry is Parks and Recreation does an excellent job. Some of these properties are not their responsibility as yeah, public, exactly. public works that, that needs to address some of these other Town properties. Who does the they, they actually hired a, a person to do it, and Jeff can comment on this. I think he lasted for three hours and quit. But, uh, so, so it's up to public works to to get a person to uh, hire to. to uh, it's a pretty scary hill. Okay, uh, maybe we could ask Jeff. Jeff, can you help us a little bit with the different little parcels here and there that the town owns, and what is intended to be done regarding that? Because the same bylaws that applies to the neighbors around those properties applies to those lots too. Yeah, I have no argument with anything that's been said. Councilor Creed's right, we had a guy for an hour and a half. But it wasn't that he quit, he got an offer of a full-time permanent oh. job and ours was temporary. He started at 7 and 8.30, they phoned him and offered him a full-time job. So to his credit, he should take it. So that was great. Um, and we interviewed another gentleman today for that position. So that one costs a little behind, but yeah. I mean, what, what can I say? We have certain lots like the lot on the opposite side of the block from Mrs. Terry. It, it's not adjacent to her, it's on the other side, but we probably, we, we do mow them, more, mow them more than once a year, for sure. They go in rotation. They might be every three weeks, every four weeks. So they're not manicured lots. They're, they're simply not. We hack them down with a rough mower on them. That's what we do. And so Scalville is the same way. The problem down there is it gets so wet, we don't like to get machinery in there for a while. Or you'll and sink it out of sight. But yeah, when, um, yeah, we just need to be on them at a, apparently a better frequency. Yeah, we need to okay, well, administration will look into the schedule, the scheduling. Yeah, this good, is a problem. You get a good flame mower and I'll tell you, knock down a lot of grass. And okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, no confidential items, <coughs> and so we need one motion. Thank you. Don't everybody jump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I couldn't even get my hand up. Yeah, that was, that was quick. Actually, all in favor? Oh, no, we don't need. Thank you. Agenda is done.